Can you hear me now? I can totally hear you now. Okay, I can, okay. let me get the video going. Okay, there we go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I am pretty good. <laughs> good. I'm glad we uh, finally connected. I feel yeah. like we've been pen pals for a few weeks. <laughs> How's it going? You're still in school? Yes, we go to the 26th. No, I mean, you're literally still- Oh, I'm a, I came back to school to do this. <laughs> wow. We had we dismissed early today, had a middle school track meet where I had to go work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then I came back. So <laughs> that wow. way my husband doesn't run back and forth behind the screen. Oh, wow. Great. So did you want to try, let me make you co-host while I have that in my head, because that'll make things go easier. Did you want to try um, sharing and see how it looks or? Well, yeah, I, I just practiced some things yesterday and it doesn't look like I can present with the, let me try this. Okay. Do you have a, oh, there it is. That's the okay. one you sent me, right? Yes, um, and I don't know that if I present, I'm not sure I can move it. Yeah, I can, okay. I couldn't yesterday. I love that font. I end up, that's like one of my default fonts also on Google. That's so funny. Stop share. So that works. Okay. Are you going to be building with us or just going through the steps? Well, I've got kind of preparation for some stuff. I'm making one out of just found materials mm -hmm. because it sounded like a lot of you guys are, have home school kids that they're not in the um, classroom. Well, some of us are remote, some of us are back in the buildings. It's kind okay. of a, a huge combination and a hot mess. <laughs> so, Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm just counting the days until, until we're all done with this this year because I've kind of had enough. Right, it's been a busy. It's no, I went ahead and just kind of, I prepped um, just like some pieces to kind of show how to layer it and oh that's so funny as you showed me those pieces i recognize right away it's a giraffe and that's exactly yeah. what i'm searching okay <laughs> <laughs> oh that's too funny no i just put up some of my students maybe if i turn a little bit yeah work there so i can't wait to, to, to see you do this because this looks really cool you want me to put the the two presentations? I altered them a little bit for this um, in the chat. Um, if they're set to share on your drive, yeah, that they would... may have to they may have to ask request access, which I can do afterwards. Okay, that's fine. But let me go ahead and let me. I'll go ahead and put them in the. Wait till everybody oh, gets here. here. Yeah, wait till everybody gets in, and then you can put because I don't think. If you come late, you can see what was in the chat previous. Oh, you can't. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. So wait till we get started, okay. and um, then you can put the links in the in the chat, and then everybody can get it. Okay. I'll I put it in before we're working then. Okay. I can't find. I was looking for one particular picture where the the giraffe kind of is coming in sideways. Oh, like yeah. almost like a photo bomb, and I can't find that one now. I see it all the time, and now that I want it, I can't find it. It's like, huh? Yeah. Yeah, like, hello. Um, let's see, giraffe. Um, I don't even know how to say that. Like, uh, maybe I saw it on Facebook, and I'll have to search on Facebook. I don't know. Have you? been remote or mainly in the building we were remote last year at this time we came okay. up went home on spring break and didn't come back this year we started together and then we went hybrid so we saw kids every other day right and then we oh early this semester came back with everybody wow so, so, okay, so you've been back. yeah yeah I've been remote since the beginning of this year. I just kind of figured, let me just do this now and it'll be easier for the whole rest of the school year. Cause I didn't want to deal with coming in and out and supplies and, and all right. of this crazy stuff. So um, 
it's hard to do this stuff, you know, um, this project, I couldn't, I don't know, I don't think I could do with remote kids because maybe I could, I don't know. The thing that they lack the most is the paint and the markers. I have so many kids who are telling me they don't even have color pencils. Right. Um, so I think you could, well, what I've got right now is just completely, like this is the one I did with just cereal boxes and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I use a Sharpie, but they could use crayons. Right. Um, really, really teaches us to um, problem solve. Yeah. For sure. Um, let me try this again. Giraffe. I don't know. Photobomb. <laughs> Not getting what I'm looking for. Hang so on. See if this is. That, that? Yes, that's the one I'm looking for. Okay, giraffe hello. Giraffe hello. Okay, yes. let's see that. Hello. Thank you. There it is right there. Perfect. Thank you. Is that the one you used? <laughs> no, it's not. I just put my straight on face with it, so. It's cute. With the kids, it was a little easier just to do a straight on face. So. Right. I kind of like this one. Do you want me to introduce myself at all or? Um, absolutely. Here's here's how um, generally this works. Have you been to any of our sessions? I've been to a lot of them. I just, we've had games the last few weeks, so. Okay. So what I'll do is um, sometimes I get new people. Sometimes it's our, our same people. So I'll introduce myself and um, just quickly review what we do. And then I'll introduce you and then you can introduce, give a little background on yourself and then go right into your presentation. Okay. Um, generally, if we're gonna make stuff, we could use the last hour for the making. Okay. And then, you know, the first half hour, you could do your, your spiel and your presentation and- um, I and then do that long, quite frankly, so <laughs> maybe we'll make time then. <laughs> That's okay. You know, this is more about, it's, it's about new ideas um, and community. You know, it's a place for all of us to just come and just slow down and just make something or learn something new and, um, talk to each other about our situations and ask advice or, you know, whatever. There's totally no pressure. Um, there's no right or wrong. And there's, we're all, you know, just winging it. So. Well, my kids saw my projects here and I done it with my art one group. Uh -huh. and we are two kids and they want to do something like this. So. Cool. I think I'm going to do maybe cartoon characters with them or something. I need to change it up a little bit so it's not the same thing. So, the older ones you said? Well, the there old... are two. I'm in middle school right now. These are middle school projects that right. I've done it in high school too. But um, what if you had them do it as a self portrait? We thought we've done a self portrait. That's the only reason I didn't. Yeah. Ah, okay. We just we did the Kimmy Cantrell masks as self portraits, and then they mm -hmm. did. Um, mixed media self-portrait earlier so right. I think we could do one more of that with this group but <laughs> they probably had enough of themselves <laughs> yeah <laughs> they always panic when I tell them it's going to be a self-portrait oh no okay one of the girls did such a cute the Kimmy Cantrell she put a mask on hers it is oh, just funny yeah it is just darling so that's where we are in yep. our life yep she'll remember that forever <laughs> yeah all right, I'm going to move my screen so I'm not looking at you from the side. And what time is it? I guess uh, I could start letting people in. When I checked, we had about 25 people pre-registered. Okay. Yeah, so, well, you know what? We average between 25 and 50, depending on what the lessons are. So, um if everybody shows, uh, you know what? Doesn't matter. We're gonna have fun no matter how many people come. They'll just be jealous. Yes, exactly. <laughs>
All right, so I'm letting people in. Let me go get my um, printout from the from my printer. Uh, I should have done that before I let people in, but you know what? I'll wait and say hello. Yeah. Okay, late. All right. Hello, Sally. Hello, Heather. This is, my mom is actually connecting. Roberta. <laughs> Hello. I hate to admit I'm trying to finish up dinner with my family. I'll be back in about three minutes. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Thanks. All right. Let me run and I will be right back. Okay. Hi, Kathleen. And how you doing? I'm, oh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think I might have just muted myself. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can't see you, but I can hear you. Here I am. Hi. <laughs> so nice to see all of you. Hi, Norma. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I so much appreciate you all doing this. It is really, uh, I'm not one that easily uh, ends things when it has adults, but this is so much fun and it's so inspiring. It's it's just, it's an amazing thing. I don't know. Oh, thank you. It's really amazing. Yeah. I think we all needed this, especially yeah. this year. Mom, you're on mute. I don't know if you know that. I will mute. My husband is watching TV um, and I'm putting my earphones in. But I just have a quick question. Yeah. At some point, I don't have to mute yourself if you don't want to. Well, just... I found some earphones here. Your, um, at some point, if you need somebody to teach, uh, I could try. I'm not an adult speaker. You know what I mean? Like I don't do well with adults. I do well with kids, but I could imagine your kids. And um, I don't know, did somebody already do, maybe I missed it, a styrofoam printing plate where you you basically are using a piece of watercolor paper and a piece of styrofoam and attaching the two with a little piece of tape, like a hinge to do a, um, a watercolor print basically with a spray bottle. And no, we did not do that. That so sounds I'll, really interesting. Yeah, I'll do that. I just don't know how formal it'll be because I don't have a, a special lesson plan. I can try to whip one up, but um, but I'm willing to do that. So, and I can do it on demand. You know, like if all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't have anything for this week, call me and I'll uh, whip it up. Consider yourself called. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I um, totally am doing it. I don't have anything after um, May 6th. So if you'd like to do the following week, that would be great. Hey, I, I just clicked in my headphones and I'm not, I can't hear you. So I heard you say, uh, I'm not even sure how to put these on, after May 6th. So I'm, I'm up for any time. I'm going away in August um, for one week. For, but other than that, I'm free anytime. Okay, so let's book you for, what did I just say? May 6th uh, was the... Um, May 13th, how about that? May 13th, okay, it's going in. And you said it's watercolor printing. Um, it's, uh, we'll call it marker based, so they're just using markers. So it's the uh, very basic supplies with a, a styrofoam printing plate and a piece of watercolor paper or maybe a mixed media, but watercolor would be, you want something okay. heavy duty. If uh, if you put your email in the chat for me, yep. I can send you an email for all the information I'm gonna need for that session. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome, 7 p.m. Yep. All right, hi everybody. I'm gonna wait a couple more minutes. 
Am I on now? Yes, ma'am, you are on. Okay. Um, I don't know how many of you will be working along. We're going to be making today as we go. So uh, you might want to check the supply list that was posted. In fact, I could um, screen share right now and post the image. Um, I can get to it in my gazillion folders that are open. I tried to at least close some wine down today. Here we go. So if, if you want to work along with the presentation today, these are the supplies that we will need. You're going to kill me. I'm going to kill you? Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, somebody didn't say you're gonna kill me. <laughs> I'd love to join making with you, but since I'm in quarantine, I didn't have time to grab anything. Oh no, what happened? Well, one of our fifth grade students tested positive so the whole fifth grade the art teacher and a couple of the other teachers had to go into quarantine and then two days later the rest of the school went into quarantine oh my so gosh we've gone virtual for two weeks so you had to, you left with nothing pretty much they gave me enough time because for two days i zoomed into my classroom they got me a setup um, and i zoomed into the classroom and then found out the whole school had to go remote. Oh. But I get to go back in the building on Tuesday. Thank God. I'm about to go nuts. Wow. Being here by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here the whole year, so I understand how you feel. Wow. So I'm just watching tonight. But That's okay. It's That's nice to see other people. I was just going to say, sometimes it's nice just to watch and listen and then go back and do it at another time. Yep. Perfectly fine. I wonder if everybody's so burnt out that that's why everybody's kind of taking the week off. I have uh, my my marking period ends tomorrow, so I am going crazy with grades and work coming in at the last minute and. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. They do tend to wait to the last minute sometimes, don't they? Well, they do, and especially now, um, I teach high school, so a lot of them are scrambling for their midterm exams in all their academic classes, so we always get pushed to the bottom of the list. That's just the way it works, and I get bombarded, you know, the, the last few days before the marking period ends, because now they're all scrambling to catch up with me, so uh, we'll see. I have 24 hours to hold up hope for my marking period grades. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Keeping my fingers crossed. Keeping my fingers crossed. Um, what time is it now? Let's see. Six after. I guess we could wait till 10, for like four more minutes, and then we can get started. <clears throat> Okay, great. I got your, um, see your email, Katie. Uh, K J. Pronounced Gorilla. It rhymes with Gorilla, but it's K U R. Thank you. R Y L A. M S N. Carilla. Yep. Watercolor marker. Yes. Okay. I will email you with more details. 
um, at some point over this weekend. I have, but I wrote it down. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That sounds really cool. So it's just like like um, meat styrofoam, like a meat platter. Yep. We can use. Oh, perfect. Yep. Just any shape. Rectangle is going to be easiest if if you hinge a piece of watercolor paper on it. Whatever, just they would need a spray bottle or some type of a mister. You want something that will mist. That's gonna be best. There are other ways to do it. But, um, and I could talk about that, but spray bottle, what else? Um, and then I would also be doing, willing to do down the road, um, paper pulp, um, just like with scrap oh. papers. Not a big, huge, you know, something very small that the kids could do within their own space. Yeah. And just paper pulp sculpt um, with scrap papers. It's just water and, and paper, you know, at, you can always add glue or anything else to it to make it even stronger, but it will work. Um, I'm just going to right take you up yeah. on that too, paper. Yep. And that's a little more involved because, um, it, in terms of equipment, because it would be good to have something that acts like a gridded, um, Drain, drain strainer. So I use um, a light grid, um, a, a light diffuser. I don't know if you've ever seen them, like when you go into Home Depot or something, there's those large plastic, they're like these large plastic grates that sit on top of the big lights that allow the light to come down without like, you know, you'll have to look next time you go. But they actually yeah. sell it at Home Depot and you, it's, it's, um, it, it's a heavy duty plastic. So, but to have a piece of that to put over a bucket and then to put a piece of screen on top of that. So the paper pulp sits upon the screen, the piece of screen. Okay. And then underneath that is the light diffuser or just something that allows the water to go down into the bucket. Because if you put the screen on top of, say, a piece of cardboard, the water's going to go through the screen and then travel across the cardboard all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Have something to let it drain. Uh -huh. So the light diffuser, you know, is a support. And it, you could just put it over like a, a dish pan, you know, or a bucket or a little bowl of some kind. So I will write to you and give you specifics on that, and then you can decide whether you that's appropriate. Because maybe it's maybe it's too messy, you know what I mean? But it it's, I, it's I like smaller mess. scale. All right. <laughs> but um, having been out of the classroom and mess for a whole year, I don't know. I might have a. <laughs> Well, you let me know. That's another one that I think would be a lot of fun. Oh, we can you know. definitely do it. I I would. I miss making mess. I miss. <laughs> well, it's very sculptural. That's the coolest part of it, you know. Or yeah. it can be flat. So. Cool. Okay. Why don't we get started? Um, so, many of you have are, are repeat visitors with our club. Um, we do this every Thursday for those who, um, okay, Shelly, sorry. Well, one down. <laughs> um, so we do this every Thursday or as often as I can get um, volunteers to run sessions. And I realized that we have been doing this for almost a year, a little over a year now. And um, I'm, I can't believe it. And this has been a wonderful uh, experience. And um, my chair at the union office of NICADA, who, who sponsors this, this group, um, is just blown away by the amount of success that we have had and um, the kind of lessons and sessions that we've been doing and the volunteers that we have had over the past year. So um, it takes a community and it takes us all to keep it going. And I appreciate everybody who offers to volunteer and I appreciate everybody who shows up. So um, without further ado, this week, we have Cheryl Smith, who's doing some wonderful cardboard animal portraits um, that look so incredibly adorable. Um, I'm going to stop sharing so that I can hand it over to Cheryl. And it's all you. And um, I'm going, you know what? Let's um, spotlight you. There you go. I'm glad you know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And uh, you can share when you're ready and um, please tell us about who you are. Okay, well, Cheryl Smith, I've been teaching since like 1973, so I've been around a while. Um, I have three children, five grandchildren, ages 20 to ages seven, and I live in the middle of Kansas. So all those stories about the tornadoes and Dorothy and Toto and stuff, you know, that's kind of what, where I am in the middle of Kansas. So I've uh, taught everywhere from pre-K through college classes. I teach an uh, education class for a nearby college, and then um, I'd retired about five years ago, and then uh, we had our middle school teacher was tragically killed in a car accident uh, right before Thanksgiving. So I came back in to help finish the semester for them, and then they couldn't find anybody. So I came in and finished the year, and then they couldn't find anybody. So I came back for another year. So I've been at the middle school for oh a year and over a year and a half now. So, uh, but it, it's been a fun fun time. I've enjoyed the kids. I've enjoyed the work. So. That's kind of where, where I've been and what we've been doing. So anyway, um, I'm going to go through uh, the couple of slide shows that I do for the kids in the Google Slides. I will put these on while you guys are working and you can request access. Usually that's how it has to work, it seems like, with our system. And it sends me an email and then I grant access. You'll just need to make a copy and then you can make it your own. You can change it however you want to. So. That's what I will start with, I think. May I interrupt? I just want to ask you, Steph, are you recording? Yes. I think so. Thank you. Sometimes people remind you. Uh, I have actually found that there is a setting to automatically record every time I have this meeting. So we're good. Oh, wonderful. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I just call this cardboard critter construction. Um, we start with a circus and we, my theme this year has been the greatest showman. I like to do movie themes. It gives me, it keeps me from being bored. It makes me think outside the box sometimes on projects. So they had to pick a circus animal, but it could be anything, you know, you could use any kind of a type of an animal or something. Um, they need to find a picture of it and then they need to eliminate detail, make the head more geometric. And this becomes a pattern for your cardboard. And I'll show you some of this in a little bit. Um, you can exaggerate some features. Uh, for example, this is my elephant. Uh, I went ahead when I used the tracing paper, I exaggerated the ears because I wanted them to stand out and be more prominent than what I normally would have uh, for the elephant picture. And then uh, you start by cutting out in layers. So it's a bottom layer and I told them they had to have at least three layers deep, if not more. And they need to make decisions on how they were gonna lay out their final piece. So this is an example of how my uh, tracing paper kind of came together. And uh, these are my different patterns, but you start out with a whole piece to begin with. So you can kind of see where the ears are all one piece. And then I layered each piece separately. So as I cut the pieces out, I uh, decided what was gonna work where and how I was gonna layer the things and then go on. Uh, then we go ahead and paint everything first and add patterns. Um, the ones we used here, we used Posca markers and acrylic paint. But if you're at home, I've got an example here that I uh, just used found boxes, just cereal boxes and frozen food boxes and things like that, which works really well. I had the kids limit the amount of colors they used. And we used the Posca markers for patterns. But if you're at home, you could use Sharpies um, you could use crayons, whatever kids might have to use with. And then there's an African pattern assignment that we talked through too about where some of the patterns came from. And I had them do some reading on that and work on some pattern, just practice patterns before they started on their piece. And then I also let them use a metallic paint. But once everything was completed, painted, designed, that kind of stuff, then we assembled and we ended up with this. So that's kind of how that one went together. Um, my African pattern, and I've got the source for this at the, at the, on the last one, but I just went through, we weren't trying to make African um, designs or anything like that, but I wanted them to see some uh, authentic patterns and uh, where some of these might've come from as far as fabric and weaving and things like that, and where some of these um, designs might come from. So. 
this was something that they went through and then look, learned a little bit about color and how the uh, significance of color in African cloth. And then they created some of their own patterns, practiced them. And this was the source. So they had all of those things to work with then. And you said that you would give us the links to these in the chat, right? Yes, I will. Okay. I think you guys get to working. I will I put the links up. We wanted to wait till everybody got into the chat to begin with. So I've got one started here. I just started with my little draft picture and we use tracing paper. And sometimes, you, I mean, sometimes I've had them make it more abstract, simplified it, made it more geometric. Uh, this particular one, I just traced the very basic lines is what I did on this. And then you start cutting them out. So my first layer was just my little guy. Just I used a, uh, well, circus animal. I've got it backwards here. But uh, circus animal box that I had because I bought uh, circus cookies for my kids because that's we were doing circus theme this semester. So that was just my first layer then. So I have one layer to go. And then I come and get the next layer. So I figure out what my second layer is going to be. And you can kind of see how that goes on. Do you put them directly over each other? Or do, you use a, do you use a spacer to give it a little more depth? We just glued them on top of each other. Okay. Yeah, just, they just had to have at least three layers, if not more. Okay. And we just kept adding. I can't hold them all up, but. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, so we just keep adding pieces until you right. kind of get everything cut out. And this is just totally from boxes. Like, I, in fact, they were ones in my recycle bin here at the school today. And then you have your cardboard piece and just if what if you're gonna do any line patterns or anything like that on it. I found a pretty cool piece I was gonna use as a sidebar on here too, just um, part of the color and then work from that and then uh, do all the pattern work and then assemble it. When everything was done, then you could assemble it. Uh, I thought the uh, found boxes would be really good for kids that are at home and remote and maybe don't have the access to other supplies, but kids could use construction paper, they could use temper paint. Um, I found a lot of kids have some kind of paints at home. They're not maybe what we've got at school, but a lot of kids have different things like that that maybe they could use for this. So that's one example. Um, this was another one I did, a little bit more abstract, again with the boxes, and this one's finished with the patterns that I put on the different pieces, which kind of helps unify all the different boxes and things that I use to put it together with. I love that. And I just build it on a cereal box. So <laughs> that's perfect. You have to have real cardboard, you know, everything was just on a cereal box and um, just found different things, whatever I found in my cupboard, my daughter helped me find, <laughs> she saved some of the recycling for me and just everything's from a recycle box. So and then another one I've done, uh, this one's a little bit more geometric. And we did like the ombre color background and then used the white and some metallic colors. And this is just a more of a geometric treatment of it. But I limit the kids colors and um, tell them they have to pick two or three colors. Otherwise you get this rainbow throw up thing. And <laughs> so I think it's good for them to limit what colors they can use. And right. so. That's kind of the, the basis of it. Uh, does anybody have questions? Anybody. Anybody. So I feel like I'm in class. Yeah, I have a quick one. Um, thank you. It's, it's exciting to see that too. Um, I wonder if, if it would be um, helpful to the kids to have ahead of time for maybe the lower or the slower working students to have the templates kind of on a, a worksheet, you know, a few different ones like these would be the shapes, the typical shapes for a giraffe or yeah. that would be kind of an interesting thing if we could put something like that together you know, and already have a few um, ideas ahead of time. Right. So do they come up with their own photographs? Do they like search the yeah. web and then pick something yeah. that way? 
the kids all have iPads. Got it. Okay. So nice. They're able to print off like a big picture. So that that's why we worked from that. But we could actually, you know, provide photos um, and make our own for those kids who struggle a little bit. That's mm -hmm. that's easy enough to do. I have a class that has four adaptive level kids. I don't know if they call them the same thing in New York, um, but these are above the functional level um, as far as the special education group. They maybe can function, read at a kindergarten, first grade level, so they're a lower level. Mm -hmm. But um, they were able to handle this easily. Great. So they really didn't have any trouble at all. You know, we just took a step by step. We didn't go fast with them. Right. But they were able to do it. And we practiced. They have little sketchbooks and we practiced their patterns and things, what they were going to do in the sketchbook. So. so that's the, do you, do you lead up with the patterning and the color, colors prior to this? Well, I, actually what I did first was cut out pieces. We started with just plain pieces. Okay, so you didn't do the whole lesson on the patterning prior to starting. So you kind of cut the pieces and then you took a break and then did the patterning. This, and then they painted them. If We were using acrylic paint. Right. So we did the cardboard. They had to choose the color for each of their pieces. Okay. So it would have looked like this. Right. And then they uh, had to choose a color thinking about the layering, what colors they were going to use. And if they were going to paint their background, you know. Okay. And so after they got that done, then we worked on patterns. And we talked about how patterns could fill a shape. Uh, maybe some of them had borders on them. If they had extra cardboard, we talked about making a border. But we mm -hmm. talked about how patterns could fill and kind of uh, accent a shape, I guess. Right. Somebody is a Zentangle fan. <laughs> you know, the kids love it. Yes. They really do. Once they figure out they can do it. <laughs> I've been doing that for the past few weeks in my um in my after school art club and the girls the girls love it. I wish more boys would get involved, but well but it, I would bet probably fifty percent of the ones behind me are boys. Really? Yeah. Um the See, if I did it in class, they would be fine. But when yeah. I do it after school, then the boys don't come, the girls do and so, yes, yeah, my art club is mostly girls. Yeah. I have like 25 kids yeah. coming to a boys. Wow. <laughs> but that's okay. Yep. No, but I would say probably half of the pictures behind me are the boys. That's great. Yeah. They, they, the parents they work? Are, both parents are boys. Uh, the son one's a boy. Um, Did they work smaller scale, if I may ask? Could they or... Or did they, I'm trying to figure it out, or are they really far from you? They're about eight by ten. Okay. Yeah. What I did was use my I just cut up scrap cardboard in various sizes, about eight by ten, but it's not perfect. So they had to choose a piece that fit their animal. Oh, so from the it has to match the printout um, from the right. Like my giraffe is taller and skinnier than my. You know, right you know my elephant but then i extended my ears beyond it too but yeah i for the giraffe i used a skinnier piece because i didn't have as much space so cool so just to review the process if you don't mind me asking so you have the kids first print their image after they choose yes. and it has to be within approximate eight by ten mm -hmm. and then you have the kids sketch in their sketchbook from the image the different layers, the templates for the different layers, or the pattern, the pieces for the different layers? Well, actually, no, we just go to tracing paper. Okay. And then did I see in one uh, example, did you have different pieces of tracing paper that got smaller and smaller and smaller as as it advanced, as the, um, the dimensional part would advance towards you? We started with this, and you cut the entire shape. I wasn't very clear on that. The entire head out first. Yep. Okay. Then my next cut 
was everything but the ears and the, the little mane. And you're using the same piece of tracing paper? Yes. For each, you're not doing a separate piece of tracing paper right. for each? So this is my first cut, was the whole piece. Okay. Yeah. And then I cut the tracing paper down. So okay, I have, so the tracing paper did get cut. Yes. Okay. I just have two pieces to show you, but yes. You had done it more than once, yes. Okay. Yeah, so we just do it once. We just make Got it, it. That's where I was confused. I wasn't sure if you had a separate piece of tracing paper for each part no. or if it's one that continually got cut down or reduced. Keep cutting it down. I keep thinking, okay, what do you cut off next? That's what I told them. You know, the ears, we want them to go back. We want this to, to extend out. So the ears didn't got cut off for the second place. And then we want the muscle to come out. So it was the third layer. Does that make sense? Yes, yep. it does. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so. I, I appreciate animal, you explaining. Yeah, the whole animal. And it just keeps what keeps extending towards you physically. So right now we are tracing our printout. Yes. Okay. Has anybody working on found objects, found cardboard? Or are you all going to paint or are you just watching? Okay. Um, I am going to try with cardboard. I don't know how far I'm going to get. And we used scissors the whole time. Um, we really didn't get into exacto knives. The kids were able to cut with scissors. Oh, that's good. And we use, I mean, I have, they're adult scissors. They're not kids scissors, but they all were able to use the scissors. And I, we talked about cutting it down. Sometimes just cutting close to it first and then going in and getting the detail. And that helped a lot of them. Does the glue stick pretty well? I use just Elmer's. I use just Elmer's. And it, and it doesn't, the glossy surface doesn't come off of it? No, we weight them down. Yeah, it sounds funny. We put their iPads on them. We put their iPads on them. <laughs> Once they get a layer, I said sit your iPad on it because it's heavy and flat. So that is, the, that is a good if idea. You're using, if you're using, a, let's say, the recycled cereal box, are you gluing onto the printed varnish side? Yes, it worked fine. It'll stick? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, we had no problem at all. But you, you use a sandpaper and give it a quick, you know, before you try to glue the two together. I did to wrap it up. Yeah, it stuck really well. It's just one with glue. It's on there. And they're both shiny. Great. Okay. I would I would think that the tempera would not stick to the shiny printed side. I would be afraid. Off. Yeah. I would be using the the back side. Yeah, you'd have to use the unprinted it's side. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I used to add a little. Oh, sorry. I used to add a little bit of glue when we were painting on the printed side. But to the tempera. Yes. Is that it. a magic trick that that you? Well, you know, back in the day when you make one way to make your own um, scratch art would be to paint it black on a cereal box on the colorful side and then I always added a little bit of glue to it and then they could go back and scratch out and draw lines or whatever it was kind of it was a different way to make their own scratch art okay good scratch art too we've had really good success with that they use oil pastel underneath and then a thin acrylic on top Hey, do you mind holding up your giraffe? I'm just trying to do a tiny version of it. This one or? Without a photograph. <laughs> this guy? I meant your cardboard pieces. Oh, the cardboard pieces? So it was your big shape, then, the, then the, that part the of the head. The head and then okay. the muscle. Okay. And then... I had two little nostrils. So have you tried um, 
what Steph had said about um, creating the uh, three dimensional the spacers in between. Um, I've used have the kids use scraps of cardboard, just chop it up into like smaller pieces and put that in between where they won't show easily. Um, you kind of dots too that are sticky dots. Uh, yeah, yeah, those would probably show less. That would be good. Yeah, no, that would be cool. I just didn't have them. We just did them flat. You know, I never had any idea how a giraffe's head was actually shaped. <laughs> so interesting i didn't realize they had that that lump in the middle of their forehead yeah. at least from the angle that that i'm doing so i don't know if you can see my my drawing no, it's there it's there <laughs> yeah, i never they got a nice little big bump yeah it's like they got clocked in the head uh-huh third horn <laughs> <laughs> And on this one, I would probably go ahead and figure out something I could do for the main, like clip into it. So it, I would have a textured, a physically textured main. Yeah, like um, make a fringe. Yeah, with scissors. Uh -huh. Right. Mine doesn't show. With it yet, but... My little guy doesn't, you can't see it on, on mine. Yeah, it's okay. just full frontal, no, no mane. <laughs> and then exaggerate it and have it blowing in the wind. Yeah, a straight on picture helps the kids. Yeah. They get a little confused with uh, something turned. Okay. Or a, a so side view, a side view was also good. So now I cut out the outside shape and trace that on my cardboard, right? The whole thing. Yep. Cut out everything. All righty. Okay. Let me put those two links in the chat. Thank you. You guys are working. Wow. I think I'm going to make his tongue flapping too. That would be fun. Yes. That's the African patterns one. Was the source in that uh, website itself? African patterns, it is, yes. Okay. It's on the last page. I love those African patterns. Well, I'm not trying to like appropriate or anything. I just, we just use them as, as examples of some neat patterns. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the second one, that should be the um, cardboard critter. So. You had started to show, um, there was a presentation where you, you had actually photographed your step-by-step. -step. Yes. Could you share that also? I will. Yeah, I shared it once, but I'll go through it again. I mean, um, the file. Can, it's can there. You, That's oh. the second one in the chat. Okay, great. That's the one I put these um, in Google Classroom is what we use. And so I just put them in the Google Classroom so kids can refer back to them anytime. Uh -huh. We go through it in class, but this way they've got a visual and they can go back if they forgot what to do next or. Yeah, I record my instructional it. sessions also and they can yeah. always, because I have so many kids who don't attend. So at least they can watch the recording if they miss the class and just catch up. Well, this may re have you request access. And if it does, I will just add, you know, give it to you after this is done. But um, no problem. I said copy, but sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> well, I appreciate you sharing. Thank you. Let me go grab my, we were talking about scratch art. Let me go grab my scratch art. Okay. That we just did too. Yeah, we had just, we did oil pastels. Mm -hmm. 
oil pastels and uh, a thin temper uh, acrylic over the top and just toothpicks to scratch it off. The kids love it. Wait, say that again. Uh, just oil pastels, really heavy. Right. And well, we out do the picture, outlined it with Sharpie because you've got to have that blank space so you can't find your drawing again. Right. And then oil pastels over the top, coloring in between your black lines, and then let it dry overnight, and then use toothpicks and scratched it off. And they're really coming out beautiful. The kids are so That's excited. Really beautiful. It almost looks like a woodcut. Or some of them are looking like stained glass, even. Yeah. You know, the colors are just really bright. And you mind going over that? Some something happened to my screen, so y'all were a one inch square on my laptop. Okay. <laughs> now, now that I'm back full, I've tried to get access, and I'm doing my Zoom this Zoom with my personal, and somehow it was signed in as my school. So you'll be getting requests. That's fine. That's but no problem. You. Okay, so you did the oil pastel. Well, of course, we drew it. They drew the picture with a pencil, and we're on cardstock, but just cheap cardstock. It's not anything fancy. And then it takes sharpie and outline it because you don't, you have to have that blank space between the oil pastel uh, between one section and the other. Mm -hmm. Like and it's like letting in a stained glass window yes. would be that same so space. Like said, don't color on the uh, sharpie. You have to color in between the lines. Okay, and they put it on really heavy. And some of them were saying, well, it's, it looks really kind of crummy. I said, it'll look fine when it's done. And it does. And then I get cheap Walmart acrylic paint. It has to be kind of thin and a thin coat. And ju they just paint it on really fast, let it dry overnight, and then just go back in with toothpicks. And we talk about how the form should follow, the scratches should follow the form. So, you know, they're not just scratching straight across. So... And you know how ridiculously silly I feel like I've always I've been wondering for years how teachers did that and I never realized how kind of simple it is. You should oh, have asked loved me. <laughs> I literally loved it. I'm <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be your pass. Hold it up one more time and I'm gonna take a picture so I'll remember how. <laughs> oh, that's a good well, idea. I can give you this one too if you want me to the pat the uh, Google Slides for it. Yes, please, please. Okay. Thank you. Let me go find it. I put it away, but let me go find it. Thank you. <laughs> you know, us art teachers are greedy for free information. Oh, trust me. <laughs> you don't have a life saved. It's not even funny. <laughs> I know. Okay, it may take me a minute to find it. I'll get it. Okay. Okay. Because I closed everything out so I could work with you guys today. Cheryl? Yes. Did you put blue in the paint for that one? No, it's acrylic. It's cheap. Okay, it's the wait. cheap bottle of acrylic from Walmart. Okay, and no, no, nothing in it, just the acrylic. Just the acrylic. It has to be thin. You don't want it too thick on there. So if we have regular acrylic, we should water it down. That or that some, sometimes they say a little soap in it. I've not tried that. What does the soap do? I maybe just helps it stick better. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I've used soap. It also helps it wash out if you get any on you. <laughs> yeah, they're told all the time acrylic does not come out of your clothes. And you know how many shirts I scrub. So I'll have to experiment this summer. Let me run, th I'll, if you don't mind, I'll run through that screen share too. Sure. I don't mind at all. Okay. This is so great. That's just beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, and the kids are this beautiful too. These are middle school. These are art one kids in middle school. They've never had art before. We don't have elementary art. So this is what they've got. Okay, why is now not there? It goes. Okay, I have a George O'Keefe that puzzle that they watch. Um, I always like to connect an artist to it somewhere. But they had to find an image in nature with bright colors, and then draw the design, outline it with fine point sharpie. And then start adding the color, the oil pastel color. 
Do you have them trace it or do they draw it freehand? This time they can draw. This time they can draw. Okay. Because it's, I tell them it's nature. It doesn't have to be perfect. We don't know if the tulip looks like a tulip, you know, looks like right. the one we're looking at. So, so I tell them over, it has to be bright colors. Don't use your dark colors and don't color with the Sharpie line. <clears throat> and no white space can be showing at all. And then just carefully cover the thin layer of black acrylic and let it dry. I tried a hair dryer, it did not work well. I suggest you just let it dry, air dry. And then a toothpick, gently scratch the black paint off. And that's that's that one. Um, I had one kid who put his paint on a little thick and we um, ended up using a nail for his. We made it worked really well. Great. So you got two for one here. Is it good to you ask you for your chart and whiteboard? Oh. <laughs> hey, you know we love that. Is it bad to ask for your email in case my? Nope, I'll type it in here. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll try not to email you. I just want to make sure I get that slide show. You may email me at any time. Just tell me where you know me from. Okay, thanks. There you okay. go. <laughs> so before I cut this thing now, I cut pieces off for the next layer. You cut your first one, right? This is the whole one. And you cut it out of your cardboard? And I traced it on the cardboard. Right. Okay, so now I take I off. I figured I would take off the ears and the horns and the neck and just do that, that middle piece. Okay. The middle piece and the eyes, maybe. Maybe the eyes could be separate shapes, too. Yeah, I kind of cut them out here, if you can see it. Okay. I hadn't figured out what I was going to do for, for sure with the eyes. They may go back in on top. Yeah, I was going to put them on top. With the big eyelashes and stuff, I kind of wanted to play with that a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Make little fringy eyelashes. Yeah, to go with the little fringe back here. <laughs> but I didn't want to put it together yet, because... I had to show you guys the pieces. <laughs> okay. Well, I just hit the first obstacle. What's your obstacle, Mom? My cardboard is too thick. Can't cut it. <laughs> well, you can use a, a uh, exacto. That's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to knife it. I just don't like the middle school kids do that. There were Sounds so dangerous. That had, but not generally. <laughs> I've got this. I don't know if we have any elementary teachers, but I do cardboard self portraits a lot with fifth grade. <laughs> Excuse me. And what I do is I cut the cardboard about the width. Let's say they'll start out with a head shape where I'll give them a size, and all they have to do is change the corners. And they can yeah. gradually change the rest. But for the ears, eyes, nose, and mouth, I'll give them a strip maybe three inches long by, let's say, 15. And then they can easily cut rectangles across, small. Right. But just not, you know, with their own scissors. Even but on here, I tell the kids, cut around it. Don't try and cut everything with big, thick cardboard. Um, cut generally around it. And then go in and do the smaller cuts because it's a lot easier to go in small pieces. We call that, we at my middle schoolers, we talk about bubble cutting, okay. where you cut around like a bubble letter and then detail cut. So you bubble exactly. cut first and then detail cut. That's exactly what, yeah. It just makes it easier. They don't have to have quite as much hand strength, but they were all able to do it. Even my special ed kids did really well with it, so. Have you guys all used the Posca markers? Posca? If you've never used these, they're wonderful. I've never used those. They're acrylic okay. markers. What is it, P-O-S? P-O-S-C-A. Never heard of it. They're about, 
40 bucks for a set like this, but you know, I've used them with my class all year. And other than the black, it's still good. Do, how long do they last? Is that- well, I've used them with several projects with my classes all year. Wow. They last a long time. Now I'm really picky. Everything has to be totally dry before they use them. Right. They're like marker, but they're really nice. They're, they're like a little, Pick them up. They've got a nice little point on them. That's nice. The kids love them. But mm. I won't let them color with them because I don't want to waste them. They have are to they, use the line work only. Are they pricey for the set? This is about $38. But I, like I said, I've used it all year. Right. With probably oh, five different classes using them. How many kids share a box? They all, they all share one box. How many is all? Uh, I have classes from 18 to 25. And how do you work that? Well, they don't all need them at the same time. So, and with our, with uh, COVID, they yeah. just, they're laid out there. So when they come, they can get one color at a time. They come and get it. When they come back, I have the alcohol or the sanitizing wipes. They wipe it off, put it back, and then get another color. They're just not all ready at the same time. Huh. And the color, and then they have their own, they all have their own Sharpies. The kids all have both the fine and the ultra fine Sharpies. Each kid has one of those. So a lot of that was done with the black. So that sounds good. Now those Posca markers, the kids really love them. If you've never tried them for yourself you'll want a set. And I have kids go buy a set because they like them so much. That's the one thing the students really will ask me for. What's that? They're really creamy. Yeah. They're, yes, and it's an acrylic marker and they're better than some of the other brands of acrylic markers that are out there. Uh-huh. They just, they work really well. There's two, there's more than one size of points or tips on them. So I even have kids that are doing paintings will go in with tiny details when they're struggling with a brush. Right. So with that, add di like dots to the eyes or. Oh, that them. makes it so much easier. Yeah. And they look so nice, and the, the kids are so happy because they they're not controlling the paint in the tiny tiny line yet. You know. Okay. But that's what that's what we used for the white ones. That's what I used here on the white was the Posca marker. Mm hmm. Love now that. this one, this is tempera. This was just tempera paint. I did this one in a summer art camp. So we just used temper for everything. Was the gold temper also? Yes. Oh, wow. We just, I used the end of a pencil. Uh-huh. Just to dot. To dot it. Mm -hmm. I like that what? better than the Q-tip. What fun that must have been to do that one. No, it was. Because they like making the ombre, you know, the change in the colors and. Yeah. And how that worked out. And then, um working on the patterns when they cut it apart and stuff. This was a little more abstract than the other one was, but. Where did this word ombre come from? Because in my day, it was called a gradation. Yeah. And, gradation. Then, and then they started to do the hair the ombre colors hair. and called it an ombre. So now all of a sudden it's the same. It's not a gradation anymore. Oh, it's it's yarn. Yarn because is, they call it gradation. What, mom? They call the yarn ombre also when it changes color. I've never heard that until the hair started to <laughs> be done in, in the ombre. It's like the word edges, oh, if you've heard that. Yeah, the kids edges? call it ombre, so I do. I wonder if it's Spanish. It almost sounds Spanish to me. But well, I think it's ombre French. is man. No, it sounds French. Oh, French? It's Mexican. It's, it's <laughs> Spanish, yes. <laughs> I just look this up. I use it interchangeably. I use gradation and um, ombre interchangeably with my students. I keep thinking of the word man, which is ombre. That's with the H. Yes. Oh, this it's is French. Is it? It's French. It means to shade. Oh, okay. Oh, you're right. Yep. Somebody was right. Wow. <laughs> Well, Steph, I, learned, <laughs> I learned what it meant from a student, too, about three or four years ago. Okay. Uh, 
Nope, just looked it up. That's. <laughs> Oh, I'm tired of cutting. You haven't even started. Here, look. Oh, very cool. What's your animal? I think it's a bear. Oh, a bear? <laughs> yeah. You think it's a bear? Yeah. <laughs> so the ombre, the Mexican ombre, is H O M B R E. And it's yeah, refers to that. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> <really cool. laughs> Oh, boy. I was yeah. very lazy. I got this on online and I'm working from it. We all got it online. No, but look. It's already broken up into pieces. Oh, it's already done for you. Yeah. Because I didn't have much time to do anything today. So there you or go. I've been at a track meet helping with the uh, shop put. So let me tell you. Whatever works. I think that's a good way, though, to show the breakdown of the different parts of the face, too, though. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look through all my plan books and see if I have any projects that might be good to share. Roberta, what did you look up to find that template? I've seen them before. I don't know where I've seen those. Um. I, I just put in animal heads, I think, and lots of stuff came up. And this was something about vectors. The Eastern vector. low, low poly vector drawings. Well, I have. I you. don't know what that is, but that's what it was. <laughs> it's a way of digitally doing um, these drawings in um, an online application, digital application. Basically, you go from dot to dot. You, it's a line, and that, that's the vector. So when you're drawing it on Photoshop or Illustrator, oh. it, it, it's, 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 like, um, in that, it's like an animation when when they they take a picture of a person in, an, in a pose or something, and it comes out in dots, and then they fill it in with the line, dot to dot. Kind of like if you it's think of um, remember when we did Tinker Toys? Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like a digital version of a Tinker Toy, creating yeah. the three D effect. It's how you draw in on digital media that yeah. can be expanded to any size without losing quality. Right. Where if okay. you just did a drawing and expanded it, you'd lose quality. But with a vector drawing, it's already, it's drawn dot to dot, even if it's a curved dot or whatever, and you can make it as big as you want to without losing quality. That sounds good. So, I wish I knew more about this, the digital art, but uh, I have trouble getting it to sink into my head somehow. I think you just have to, it. You just have to see how it works. I need somebody to sit next to me for a while <laughs> and show me. If you've ever done the Google Draw, it's a vector. No, yeah, no I never did. Cool. If you go into Google Draw, it's a vector program because you're going dot to dot. And then it fills, in, draw. Shape, it fills in the color. Google Draw saved my life this year, and I didn't even know it existed before September. Either. It's well, maybe you can show me a little bit tomorrow. Okay. Completely saved my life. I haven't done as much with the digital because my kids are uh, were on a computer or an iPad for so much. Mm -hmm. When I got them back into class, I just been doing all hands-on stuff. A post came up on um, my Facebook yesterday, I think it was, where I had posted pictures of a, a Muppet unit that I had done. Oh, right. The, the kids made their own Muppets, and it said it was three years ago. 
And I couldn't believe it was only three years ago. It felt like a hundred years ago that I was even in my classroom and it made me miss my classroom even more. Um, and miss, yeah, that project was phenomenal. Did you see what I wrote? I made a comment. Yes, you missed my classroom. <laughs> I miss your classroom. <laughs> She let me visit a couple of times and walk around and work with the kids a little bit. I'm retired 20 years already. Ah. <laughs> well, I tried to retire. It just didn't work. <laughs> yeah, that, that was quite a story that you told. <laughs> oh, the poor guy. It was an ice storm. And it was an interstate road and slid across the medium, got hit head on. Oh, my God. He's gone immediately. Um, it's just, it's well, they didn't want me to leave, but after I left, they didn't ask me to come back either. <laughs> well, my daughter took my place at the high school, though, so she's <laughs> so it's kind of a mother daughter thing, too. That's uh -huh. me at the same school, yes. She's teaching that's at wonderful, and not too bad. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. My son teaches at the same school with me, too. He teaches history. Wow, that's marvelous. Yes. And a family affair. Yep, it Love is. It. Yeah. We have a good time. So. Well, I taught for probably more than 40 years, all told. So it probably was enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed coming back to the middle school. It's been fun. It's, I've enjoyed the kids a lot. And yeah. I can kind of play a little bit with them. And in the high school, I had advanced placement studio and stuff like that. A little bit more high stakes stuff than. Yeah. This one's That's been nice. Fun. How long were you retired before you went back? Five years. Uh, yeah. Well, four and a half, I guess. Yeah, it was the fifth year, so. But we don't have a lot of art teachers in this area, I guess. Couldn't find anybody, so. Where, what area is that? I forgot. Middle of Kansas. Oh, okay. I'm in Pensacola, Florida. Okay. How are things there? You know, we started the school out, school year with in-class students, but we had about seven remote classes. And we're down to about four, four or five remote classes. So I've got a class of remote you're blended students. right now? I only have one blended hybrid, you know, where some of them are at home and some of them are in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's the tough part because I have everything figured out for remote, but to, I'm used to teaching through my smart TV. And to do that for those in front of me, you know, unless, I don't know, no one's taught me how to show my laptop students from home what's being projected on the TV other than carting your, you know, turning your laptop towards it. Mm -hmm. But it, they- You have, have two screens, you have to run two screens, if I remember right. Yeah, like you have a, it, this only a happened with- A monitor two. and a computer. And Hi, Cindy, welcome. But my husband made sneeze guards out of PVC pipe and, and we use the thick cur uh, shower curtain clear. Right. And those have been great. He had those around every student all year. And our students have to wear masks at all times. So we do too. We have to wear masks still. In elementary, they're really good about keeping them on all the time. Most of my kids are. I have probably two all day that I have to get on. They just like to wear them under their nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have a lot of trouble. People, you know? I would have a lot of trouble with a mask all day long because it makes my glasses fog up and I can't yes. yeah. see and it drives me absolutely mad. Thank you. Okay, so I now have drawn all my pieces. So now okay. I get to cut everything out like a puzzle. Yes. <laughs> hey. Cindy, I don't know if you're just a late joiner. Can you see the things I shared, the docs, mm -hmm. Google Docs. Um, I'm just looking at behind behind you, all your beautiful artwork. Um, oh, I'm, yeah, I made a, 
At home, I made a cat. I can go show you what it looks like, but um, it doesn't have any paint on it the way that you did it. So I'm wondering if it's a pre-recorded. I wonder if I could get like a into it to see it the is. whole step by oh, step. This will, okay. be, this will be this is recorded and will be posted okay. on YouTube on the Nikata UFT channel. Okay, all of our, se all of our sessions are posted there from the past year. So you'll be able to catch up on anything if you want to. Oh, thank you. Sure. Well, and I'm, I'm just my Google Docs, uh, Google Slides are on there too that kind of step you through the process. So. Oh, thank you. It looks beautiful. I love it. Well, thanks. I was you really might, proud. Kids really loved them. You might want to re um, put them in the chat because I don't think, Cindy, you, can you see anything old in the chat? No, I don't even have a chat box up. So probably, um, I'll probably email you again. Where's okay. the chat? Oh, I'm sorry. Where's the chat? I can put them back in. That's okay. My daughter is helping me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as usual. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't see anything from original since I came so late. Okay. But um, Just putting some new ones, put them back in again. Thank you. I appreciate that. So after you cut out each piece, can you go grab the cat that was in the kitchen so I could at least show them I made something? Um, after you did each piece, you painted each section. Yes. And then you glued them together. Yes. Did all the painting, okay. all the design work before I assembled. Okay. Very nice. Okay. It is hard on the hands. So you said you painted the whole thing before you cut out all the individual pieces? No, we cut them all out first okay. and then okay. painted each piece. Right, okay. Let me, you want me to go back to that slideshow? I love it again. That help? Oh. Yeah, that, that would be good since some people are still working. We can just... Okay, let me go back to the slideshow. I, I, I did not think you painted the whole thing at once, and I thought I heard somebody just now say something like that, so it made me think I had it wrong. <clears throat> I've had those Posca pens in my classroom about three years, and they're so precious that I've only gotten them out a couple of times. Oh, okay, I'm going backwards. Okay. <laughs> That's um, okay. No, we made the pattern first, just tracing over like a picture. And then you got your pattern. So I cut all the pieces out first. And then they had to paint them all first. And we did all the pattern work, designs, and things like that on them before assembling them. <laughs> That oh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, this is the little cat that I made. I don't know if you can see him, but um, he's got little layers of a head and a chest. And so it's kind of similar. Just didn't get a chance to paint it. And then you would have a background, I guess. Yeah, he's cute. Good. Okay. And oh, then he's you, really cute. So this, is, has, this has more texture in it, I guess. I like the texture. I like the corrugated cardboard and stuff that you pulled so through there. Oh, thank you. So I was inspired to take your class, and then I forgot about it. I'm sorry. But I'm going to see. <laughs> I can kind of piece it together. <laughs> what about adding a, a fish bone on his foot? Yeah, we could do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Great lesson. I love it. Well, thank you. We also got a freebie on scratch art. <laughs> I can put that one back up there. You want me to do that one again? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know scratch art? Yeah, I'm interested. Let, let me know. Uh, I just remembered something. Years ago, I did um, like a village scene in this cardboard cutout with layers, a, a back piece and then different buildings, like one on top of the other, behind each other and in front. But everything no, out of the please. cardboard. That was so long ago, my gosh. We did some cardboard work too with, uh, like my theme was, The Greatest Showman was my theme. I used the movie. 
And so uh, my art two kids did clowns. We did call graph clown prints with cardboard mm -hmm. layers. So that was fun. Okay. This is yeah, so cute. Somebody say something? We would like the recorded YouTube channel, the link to it. Do you have that? Me? Yes. Cindy asked for that. Can you type it? The recorded channel? Oh, do you mean where to find everything? Yeah, I think that's what she wanted. Yes. Okay, sorry. Um... Now, did that change? Because I went in there today and it looked like it said it had been, um, was out of date or something. Maybe I just went to the wrong site. Let me see if I could just go to, let me see. Hold on. Because um, that's what I put in. YouTube. Go to my channel. Okay, here's the link. Whoops. Let's see if this gets you guys. Try that. Cheryl, yes. just curious. I'm, after doing this with uh, multiple classes, is there um, a couple of animals that seem to be the most popular amongst your students? Well, I think because I did an elephant, we had a lot of them do elephants. So I think that was part of it. But uh, because we were doing the greatest showman, they had to pick a circus animal. But we also, you know, some got pretty creative. You know, there might be some dogs that were... Uh, circus animals, you know, performing dogs and things like that. So some of the kids uh, pushed it a little bit, which was fine. I just, you know, wanted to think outside the box a little bit, so. Hi, Norma. Hello, sorry, I got kicked out, so. <laughs> That's, okay. That's okay. Are you ready for us for next week? Ready for us for next week? I am. Um, do I need to send you a list of the supplies? Um, did you not do that already? I can't even remember. I don't remember, but I can resend it. Um, okay. I know that <laughs> um, embroidery thread and a, a nice needle is a really good thing. But, you know, push pins, but I'll, I'll, I'll email you. Okay. I think I sent you an email um, to confirm it. Yes, I, and I told you if if they if you think there will be an interest, I'll be happy to. But um, I have a hard time my computer, my laptop at school. It won't let me switch back and forth, so you won't have my face. I don't know if I can sign on with a different device or not. Yeah, you can like, sign on with more than one at a time. So if you sign on with your phone, you'll be good. And this computer here that I'm on now, it's my school desktop. It, uh -huh. it doesn't need the camera doesn't work. I mean, it's a brand new computer, but the the programs are fighting, and they they it won't let the camera work. So I have not, to use my laptop to do the demo. Um, that's crazy for a new computer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not even. I got it this year. They switched out my old one, but there's some kind of software issue. I called our tech people in, and she tried to go. If she signs on my computer with her credentials, she can access the camera, but when I sign on with mine, can't access the camera. That's so strange. That's so strange. That's why I'm always a black box. 
A lot of times I like the black box because I don't have to look at it. I think I remember you seeing you not always as a black box. Well, they switched it out sometime. It was after school started. And when I, when I did them at home, I, you know, my home computer doesn't fight with the program. But hmm. this, this computer here, it does. That's but crazy. The old computer that I had, I could do the camera. Oh, wait, you're in, wait, you're in California. You're in California. Right. So you're, oh, right. Texas. So you're, oh, Texas. Texas, yeah. All right. Well, if you want, we well, can um, want, we can set up a meeting to try to test it out once you're home. And um, make sure that everything's working. Okay. I mean, well, I was going to do it here at school because I can get my, my, my other laptop. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I can get it and it will show the, the demo because I have a camera set up and it will show the demo. But okay. when I try to reverse the screen, it, it, it won't. What's so, the time difference between time New difference. York and Texas? New York and Texas. It's 7.13 right now. Yeah, that's where we are in Kansas too. Yeah. It's so, so you're only an hour behind and you're still in your school building I'm always here <laughs> my internet at home stinks <laughs> oh my goodness so when I, yeah we live like in the country in a low-lying area and the internet is just horrible they don't offer cable so we have to do satellite and it's just it's terrible oh boy okay well, did you want to, to do a test run prior to Thursday? We can. What do you want to do that? And um, I have other devices. I've signed I've signed into Zoom with like my cell phone. I just have a hard time with that. But I can. I mean. Well, you you tell I me. Use the camera. When will be, uh, if you're going to do it from school, when will it be convenient for you? Um, what about Wednesday evening? Um, that should be fine. That should be fine. Okay, Wednesday, in any, any time that's convenient, because like I said, I'm always here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can do one, so I have grandkids. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so, so, well, I'm trying to think. Well, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, I'm hearing myself echoed. I know, I was being echoed too. Let me get my iPad and see if I can sign on to it, if I can figure out how to get to Zoom on my iPad, because that could be a way. Okay. If I just okay. had the two devices. So sure. Let me go get that and see if sure. I can sign on. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or? Anybody want to show their stuff? I can share my pieces. Very cool. Very cool. I'm got, I, I even curled the tongue. Oh, fun. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I have all these itty bitty pieces. And the knobs. Oh, your trying background to, is beautiful. Trying to figure out how many layers and which is what layer on this drawing. So complicated. You should number them maybe to keep track. What I started to do. Oh, I love it. Awesome, Sally. You're muted. Yeah, we can't hear you. <laughs> I did not pre-draw anything. My husband cut up a piece of cardboard as I was trying to get on to this. And I just used what, but I just started gluing it down just so I could remember um, awesome. the basic things. Oh, that is so cute. That is very cute. Well, it, it's not really nice. looking like a giraffe, but that's okay. At least I have the idea down. You know, sometimes the cardboard is just nice too. <laughs> I love working with cardboard with the kids. There's, right. You just can get so much from it. 
That's okay, this like my next unit. I think I need thinner cardboard. This is crazy. I Once upon a time, we used to use uh, dad's shirt cardboard from the yeah. uh, dry cleaners. Yeah. That's I ordered job. a kitchen garbage can, and it came inside a carton, inside another carton. Mm -hmm. and, and it was such thick, good cardboard, I thought, I'll save it. This will be good for the project. Didn't realize how hard it would be to cut it. You don't want more than a single corrugation, that's for sure. Yeah. It, and it, it also, it came, I'm going to show you something. It came with two other very interesting things. One on top and one on the bottom. How fun. It looked uh, like egg, almost like egg carton thing. Yeah. I'm going to do something with them. I've saved a bunch of the paper egg cartons like that to do something yeah. with too. They'll paint nicely. They're not like the styrofoam ones. So either that or I could just hang them up the way they are. <laughs> Avant avant guard art. Avant guard. Spray paint them and frame them and call them uh, ode to Louise Nevelson. Very good. Yes. <laughs> No, I somehow, I, I can see doing a tiny painting inside of each one of these boxes. That's ambitious. Yeah, that'll take you a while. And I also think these look like chairs. Chairs? Chairs to put little figures sitting yeah. on. That just occurred to me. Yeah, they do look like chairs. That could be a lot of fun. We shall see. Kathleen, did you get anything done? I am checking out pictures. Oh. Before I start, I'm trying to find. So I'm curious to know if you have certain sites you let the kids use that are like royalty free or, or it doesn't really matter. You're, I suppose you're just working as inspiration. Right, but, we're not copying them exactly. So okay. I don't worry about that. So there's some here that are really fun. They're already exaggerated just in between maybe foreshortening or, or whatever. Somehow the pictures are taken in a way. They're quite right. funny. <laughs> so I'm thinking of trying a horse. Yeah, we do do a project where they learn how to abstract an animal. That was fun. Hmm. That's a good idea too. Yeah, we just sat through several steps on going from a realistic one to an abstract one. And ah. We did that one in colored pencil. Nice. They that would be out. an interesting lesson. Yeah. I have lots of examples of that one. <laughs> now they uh, learned how to use colored pencil in a realistic way and how to layer colors and develop the shapes and forms. And then we abstracted it and they did like really bold black color for that one. That sounds very good. Boy. It's almost like wood. You must have some really tough cardboard. <laughs> Are you using a blade, Mom? She's got a box knife. Yep. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. No, I couldn't even make a dent in it with the scissors. I'll but I'm debating whether I should just go find my stash of thinner cardboard and start over again. I'll see. Now, mine's just like one layer. It's just a layer thick. Okay, I'm done. So now, I guess I have to paint, which I'm not prepared to do right now. <laughs> I use surgical shears with my kids when cutting through cardboard, and it is brilliant. And then there's also something that it's more expensive. I 
I can get the surgical shears that have a they're bent elbow basically. They when you cut they bend so you're not it's not hurting your hand and your wrist as much. Um, okay. But there's also these canary knives. Of, yes. yes, that are kind of neat that people um, have spoken very highly of on a lot of different um, for cutting cardboard on a lot of different places that I've seen. I've not personally used one, but uh, I'll I'll post it to show you what it looks like. I've seen those too, uh, Kathleen. Those are good. That's cute, Stephanie. Yes. I'm not going to put up the little bitty bits, but <laughs> I put the eyes and. <laughs> then it's just going to start designing it too. That the kids enjoy that process, part of the process. So. Something we were like that. COVID, we got some money that I was able to get individual supply kits for every kid this year. Mm -hmm. So every kid has a pizza box that has Sharpies, scissors, rulers, uh, pencils, colored pencils, oil pastels, watercolors. And that's been wonderful. You that's know, a lot of money. It was a lot of money. Oh and uh, we are very fortunate. I said, it's so nice. I hope the next teacher keeps it up because now all she has to do is replace things that wear out. Right. And the kids have not lost things. They've not destroyed the erasers. I've had one eraser out of 115 kids destroyed. Wow. Normally they tear up erasers like crazy, you know. Uh, the Sharpies are all there. They don't walk off with them because they're theirs, you know. They put them in the So that's been wonderful. Yes. Could you send an email link to Lauren in the clung at gmail.com so I can try to sign on? Um, can I send the email link? To get into this meeting because when I try to sign on to my other devices, it says I'm already joined when I click on the link. Okay, hang on. Uh, Okay, it's what's the email again? Norma, what's your email? Norma's showing up here. I don't know. Can you hear me, Norma? <clears throat> Can you type your email? Oh, there you go. Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. I was talking up in dorm. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do that. Okay. R A N D. Okay. Let me know if you get it. It just got really quiet. Yeah, I I was looking to see if something got muted. <laughs> yeah. Just everybody got quiet. Some sound, background sound just went off. Mm -hmm. It's called the seven minute lull. They've done studies every every seven minutes on average groups get quiet. <laughs> interesting. Did someone say these rainbow scissors work good for cardboard? Yes, I use them with my students and they're great. With this they're, cardboard that we're using? Uh, you know, like... Regular Amazon box. Yeah, yes, even just a little thicker than that. If, if it's like really corrugated, then no. You know what I mean? It would be harder for anything. You'd have to use some type of a box cut. Yeah, yeah, they look really unusual. Norma, yeah, I get the email. Well, you. Have, I have not gotten it yet. Oh, she just got it just then. Good. Okay. So let me try to sign in with my phone. <clears throat> wow. Hmm. It still says I'm joined in on another device. I can see your name here, Norma. Well, I'm signed in with my school computer, but I'm trying to sign in with two, with multiple devices. 
and I'm not, it's not letting me. It just keeps telling me that I'm already signed on. You want me to remove device. you from this one? Well, if you, if you remove me, um, it still won't let me because when I got kicked out, it'll wait like a couple minutes before oh. I can rejoin. And see, I'm, and it, I'm trying to get it because I'm doing the, the sketchbooks next week. Right. And you can just see the project. <laughs> you don't have to see my face. So if you're okay with that. Yeah, we can work around it, I guess. Because, yeah, they're not letting me. I've got my phone. I've got the iPad. and But I, uh, I did test doing the Zoom with the um, computer where the display, but we, uh, we'll, I'll do we'll double check that, too. Okay. So what we said and Wednesday? Is, yeah, is that okay? And yeah. if you want to stay after this, I can sign on to the other computer and just check it now. Sure. Why don't we do that? Okay. Since I'm, I'm leave I'm, this meeting and sign on with the other computer. Okay. 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 All right. I'll be right back. All right. So um, I've I've um, saved some frontal images of animals in um, a little folder in my in my drive. I didn't know if there was a way to force share those. I could share them with you so they were e easier to print for the kids to already have them available. I don't have iPads with the kids and we can't print either. Right. So I'd have to have them come to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do that sometimes too. When we did Animal Eyes, I printed off a whole ton of them and they picked. I didn't want to mess with resizing them and all that kind of stuff. Right. We have that process done in, a, in advance if, if necessary. Yeah. I do hmm. that too. Just started pouring here. Pouring. It's hot out here for the first time for a while. <laughs> I've been to so many baseball and soccer games where it's just been freezing. You get home, you're just bone cold. Wow. Trying to find cardboard to do a border. Kathleen, do you think those scissors are kind of dangerous for elementary upper grades, fourth and fifth? I didn't know how pointed and sharp they are. Um, I would say not any more dangerous than any other scissor. They're probably less dangerous than a than a pointed pair. The the fronts have like a like a little fold, like a metal. It's folded so that they don't, uh, I wouldn't want to say it's a safety piece, but I, I don't know quite why it's there, but the very tip is not pointed. It's rounded. It's more blunt and it has like a folded piece. Um, okay. Because they go in like with dressings and cut it. Yeah. So they don't cut That's the skin. They're made to Got it. So it is a safety thing. Yeah. Okay. That's why they, they, I think they'd be safer than scissors. Really? Yeah. A point of scissors anyway. Thank you. I'm going to order those tomorrow. <laughs> the only thing I would think of, the, the fourth graders, if you have real tiny fourth graders, they're more like a, the size is more like an eight inch shear, do you know what I mean? So if they have tiny hands, it might be harder for them to use it. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I think my fifth graders have no problem with them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Has anybody tried getting on the Google Docs? Do you have to request access? I didn't know how it was going to work on your end. Yes, I, I went right away and I asked for access. Okay. Also, I did the same. Emails then. I'll get them after this session's over. Okay. Hi, Norma. You're back. I'm back. So yay. <laughs> yay. Yay. All right. Let's see if I can do the video. All right. So that one doesn't want to do that. Cannot start video. Settings. Hmm. So maybe it just completely made a liar out of me and it won't let me do anything. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, so now you can see me. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right. 
But um, I have a video camera here. I'm pointing to it like y'all can see me. Um, and I've been doing videos from it and it works. But when I try to do the reverse view, it would never let me do it. So let me try to get back to the webcam. Okay. And it's back to black. Mm -hmm. I might have to do this at home because my computer doesn't fight with me at home. Yeah. Let's see if I can Will you be able to? Cards on school ones or something. Let's see. Okay, there it goes. All right, I just unplugged it. So, all right, I will be able to do that, but I don't, like I said, I don't think it's going to let me reverse the views. That's okay. So, as long as we can see. It did this time. It just completely made a liar out of me. Don't you hate when that happens? Yes. <laughs> Seems to be my life, apparently. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, Maybe all you had to do was unplug it and plug it back in. That's what I did it twice and that, and it fixed it. So, you know, we're talking about cardboard and I had my kids last week. I had my kids all do, if y'all have a second, I would love to show you some of these cardboard pieces my kids did. Sure. I had them painting. It was my painting class. And I said, all right, we're doing this. It's fun because I have all this cardboard that are corrugated board that my, um, we, we have and we're recycling it. Sure. So Steph, I have a question in regard to that. When people are sharing these awesome designs like Norma is and um, oh, no. Sally showed hers and you showed yours, awesome? and um, yeah. does it record when in the recording when we look back, it, is that recorded too? Yeah. Or, the, or is everything, it just what's shared? Everything is recorded. I like the way you cut away the corrugation. And, and that was part of the requirement that I had the kids do. I said, I want to see part of the patterning to be, and this, this was my sample, and this is just acrylic paint. This student used acrylic paint. And this, believe it or not, is a really happy child. <laughs> but she did these little voodoo dolls. She is the happiest kid I have. And this is what she gave me. And I was so excited to get it. Wow. But my kids, they... I have them do, they've done, they finished this project and did it again. And I was so excited that they were that excited about it because, you know, we've got four, my seniors have 14 days left. My <laughs> other kids have 19 days and it's like, they want to stay and do art. And I'm so excited over that. Awesome. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, I wish I my kids things. would want to stay and do art online. I do think it's easier in class. I oh, think absolutely. It's in online as much. I really do. Yeah. When we started this year, it was horrible because we were hybrid. We had some we kids coming and some kids not coming. And I had two jobs and that second one I stunk at. I, I, I was thinking I've got to find a different career because I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get back in my classroom. It's just been... When the kids won't participate, you're just sunk. I mean, there's not, you can't go sit down and talk to them. You know, you yeah. can't figure out what maybe makes them tick. You know, it's just, it's so hard. My principal is really supportive, but she's saying you, we've got to find a way to reach them. And I'm like, if they're not showing up and they're not answering my, my outreach and the parents have given up also because they can't make them do anything. It's like, what do you want me to do? I can't you know if they're not even checking in there's nothing nothing i can do so it is what it is and i just want to be over with this school year I, i've had it i yeah. hope it's better next year yes it will be better next year i'm looking for my exacto blades and i can't find them and I know I had them. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, we are um, at 8.36. Oh, Sally already left. So we're down to... Oh, look at that. This one was another oh. one. And yeah. she actually tore the pieces away. So. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, she, she's graduating, so... 
I, I loved that project. It was so fun. You need to see those kids leave. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. I was just, when you got ones that really, really love the class and you can always count on them and they are, end up leaving. I've at least had kids of former students this year. That's been fun. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, I know your mom. You know, I had her in class or I had him in class. <laughs> that's I'm cool. waiting for that to happen. I can call your mom. I know who she is. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to happen. I'm at that point where it could happen at any time. So that'll be interesting. All right, well, um, I think we're gonna call it a night and I wanna thank you both. Um, Norma, I guess we're good now. We know the magic mm -hmm. trick is to just- Unplug it. Unplug it and <laughs> plug it back in. Plug it back in. You know, it's always- Should have known. Yeah. <laughs> But I, the technology is, I don't need help, but it is out to make me look like an idiot. <laughs> it doesn't understand. I don't need the help. I'm good. Yeah. Meanwhile, kids are coming out of the womb and knowing what buttons to push without, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing. But thank you, Cheryl, for a thank fabulous you. lesson thank you. and a half and a half. We got yeah. the thank you. for the, um, for the uh, scratch art, which is really, really cool. And um, give me uh, 24 to 36 hours and I will post the recording for anybody that wants to rewatch or catch up or whatever it is. And it'll be on the YouTube channel for Nikata UFT. Um, and come back next week for Norma's presentation of her um, handmade sketchbooks. And, and I'm I do it in two sizes so you don't have to have the 12 by 18. Okay. Size. So this is the smaller size. I mean, it's like small. Cool. 